بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹ ہیئر دس از یور انگلش ٹیچر اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آر اسٹارٹنگ آر فرسٹ لیسن آف انگلش اینڈ دیٹ وڈ بی اباؤٹ جنرلی اباؤٹ دا بیسک یونٹس آف انگلش گرامر ایز ویل ایز اسپیسیفکلی وی وڈ ٹاک اباؤٹ دا سینٹینس ٹائپس سو ہیئر وی اسٹارٹ آف سو ہیئر دا بیسک یونٹس آف انگلش گرامر آر مارفین The smallest unit is the morpheme and moving on there are the bigger units like bigger than morpheme is a word then there are the phrases, clauses and then there is the sentence. Our focus is upon the sentence but before moving towards the larger unit which is a sentence I would like to give you a very brief introduction of these three uh, four units, units too. So just have a look at uh, what are these the morpheme. The very the smallest unit in English grammar that is for in any uh, grammar is called a morpheme, which is a meaningful linguistic unit consisting of a word or a word element. So that is something which brings changes to sometimes a word which is singular that gets changes to the changed to the plural because we add s or es with that. Sometimes when we add ed or t with some words that gets changed into the uh, the present gets changed into the past. That's the smallest meaningful unit and that changes the meaning of the words. When you add the morpheme to the particular words, that actually brings changes to the meaning of the words. That's why this is called a meaningful linguistic unit like chair becomes chairs and you may say laugh becomes laughed, received becomes received, learned gets learned. So the present gets changed into the past and there are also uh, uh, various other forms of the morphemes uh, but I am not going into the much detailed discussion of uh, this uh, unit. I am just giving you a very brief introduction of it. Moving on the next is word uh, which is a single meaningful element of speech or writing that is used with others and when you use them with others that forms sentences but that could also be used alone as well and uh, most of the time when you write the words in English you use the space at both sides in order to make them distinct from another word. Uh, basically there are two kinds of words content words and functional words. Content words Content words are the words which you may call them the parts of speech are also called the content words like verbs and nouns and um, adverbs. They are the content words and there is no limit to these words uh, but the functional words are limited. Functional words are the things which you may uh, which add, the, add, the, add to the grammatical structure and uh, of uh, that serves a grammatical function within any sentence and that actually helps the content words to be fitted into a sentence like uh, the functional words could be the use of articles, the use of prepositions like the to and the use of pronouns they and they are the limited ones. Then moving on the next is phrase what is a phrase? It is a group of words that express a concept and is used as a unit within a sentence. A phrase is a me meaningful unit and that unit is used in a sentence. So when you use uh, different kinds of phrases, when they are combined together, they make up a sentence. But that does not mean that phrases are not meaningful. Phrases are meaningful in themselves. But when you combine them together in one sentence, they form a sentence and that is a larger unit of English grammar. The, for example, you may have a look. Here the first phrase is the brown hat. Uh, blowing away is another phrase, in the wind is another phrase but uh, if you combine them together that would be like the brown hat is blowing away in the wind. So that would make up a sentence, a full sentence. So these units when they are combined together they form a sentence. In the next example you may see the angry dog chased the scared boy. So this sentence could be divided into three phrases. The first phrase is the angry dog. Chased is another phrase. This could also be called the verbial phrase. I'm not telling you my detail of that so that you, you may not get confused. But anyways, the scared boy is another phrase. So here the angry dog, you may call that a noun phrase. Just for an introduction, I'm telling you. This is the verb phrase. Then the scared boy is an adjectival phrase. Next example, a lot of people is one phrase. Do not sleep another and at night at the, uh, another, another phrase. 
uh, here the horse is one phrase runs is another phrase and at a good speed is another phrase so you may distinguish the phrases in, within any sentence and uh, then you may have a you may be able to understand what the phrase is and how to uh, see the distinct phrases used within certain sentences the next is clause a clause is a group of words that contains a verb a clause may form part of a sentence or it may be a complete sentence in itself for example he was eating a chicken sandwich this is one clause or uh, we we would be looking into much detail about the clauses in our uh, next lecture so i'm not going into much detail but anyways a clause may be a sentence so you're not going to confuse it with the sentence a clause may be a sentence but our sentence may not be a clause a sentence is made up of one clause or more clauses so uh, a clause is made up of a subject and a predicate next in the next lecture we would see what is a subject and what is a predicate and what is the structure of the sentences but our today's lecture is about the types of sentences so here we are not going to talk much on the structure of a sentence moving on this is what we have to discuss next which is sentence the larger unit of grammar so we would see what is a sentence so here the definition says that a sentence may be defined as a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate and that expresses a complete thought sentence is something that expresses a complete thought and sentence is also the larger unit of grammar as i told you earlier for example the baby is smiling and here you may see in these examples if i would tell you about the subject and the predicate that is made up of a subject and a predicate so the baby is a subject is smiling is a predicate my pet is a subject is a cola is a predicate mango is a subject is the national fruit of pakistan is a predicate and i is a subject and one is a predicate next we would see the classification of the sentences so sentences are classified in two ways that is according to use and the second is according to form so today what we would discuss which is called the sentence types they are actually they refer to the one classification which is according to use so here the classification of the sentence today we would discuss the classification of the sentences according to use according to use the sentences are termed as declarative imperative interrogative exclamatory and optative so these are the five basic types of sentences according to the use moving on first we would have a look at what is a declarative sentence a declarative some sentence is something which states a fact which makes a statement or an assertion and uh, that is punctuated by a period a full stop and the types of the sentences that could be declarative or a declarative sentence could be affirmative that could be negative or that could be emphatic affirmative means that it could be stating some positive fact it could be stating some negative fact and it could be stressing upon some fact it could be forcefully saying something or it would be emphasizing upon one thing for example the dog in the backyard is barking is an example of an affirmative sentence the dog does not bite negative sentence i didn't warn you about the danger emphatic sentence because here the stress is upon the words here that is declaring or making a certain assertion like she is present today or he likes to eat ice cream or she does not like to eat an ice cream and here this is where you stress upon something you emphasize upon something if somebody if you said somebody to convey your message to another individual and that would person would say okay he was not present yesterday that's why i did not give convey your message to him and you'll say no he did come yesterday or you want to stress upon the thing no i did and send you a message how could you say that you have not received it so here you emphasize upon one thing that's why uh, you would stress upon one thing by using such kind of a structure and that is an example of a declarative sentence these are the some of the examples of declarative sentence like the students are playing basketball uh the okay here they say about declarative sentence that the subject usually comes before the verb it starts with a capital letter and it ends with a full stop that is the structure of our declarative sentence and 
uh, that is um, usually spoken with a drop in pitch in speech. You don't raise your pitch when you assert something, when you declare something. These are the examples. Next is uh, imperative sentence. An imperative sentence is one which expresses an advice, a request, a command or an order. And that starts with a capital letter and that ends with a full stop. And here generally the subject is not mentioned and only the predicate is expressed. And it begins with the first form of the verb usually. You may notice that it usually begins with the first form of the verb. Uh, here the first, please give me a glass of water is an example of request. Go to school, an example of uh, command or order. Please close the door, request. Tell me who is command or an order. Please call your sister, request. Kindly lend me your book, request. Do your work on time and advice. Next, we would see uh, the interrogative sentence. An interrogative sentence is one that asks a question. In, uh, you, you, you are familiar with the interrogative sentences that it usually begins with the question words like what, when, why, will, do, etc. And where the first set is capital, capital and it ends with a question mark. For example, do you know that man and that ends with a question mark. And here there are more examples of interrogative sentences. The next is exclamatory sentence. An exclamatory sentence is one which expresses sudden strong emotions or feelings. And that could be the feelings of happiness, that could be the sadness, that could be anger, surprise, fear or excitement. And uh, how do you write an exclamatory sentence? It cannot be a single word, firstly, because that is a sentence. So you may not say, if you have used one single word like help, that is not exclamatory sentence, that is an interjection. And when you use that with the next statement, that could be a full exclamatory sentence. So that would not be a single word. It usually begins with a capital letter and it ends with an exclamation mark. However, when the when you have to lessen the force of the exclamation, then you may also use a full stop, like in the second example. For example, in the first example, this is help, a house is on fire. So the both are the exclamations. That's why you use exclamation mark with both. The writer has used exclamation mark with both in order to show the intensity of the emotions in the both of these sentences, in, in this word as well as in this sentence. And they both make up one sentence. Whereas in the second example, help, our house is on fire. So here the intensity of the emotion, in order to lessen it, the full stop is being used. So that is not necessary that all the time the exclamation mark would carry, exclamatory sentence would carry an exclamation mark. Sometimes it may not. Next. For example, what a good dinner that was. And some more examples. You may see. Uh, with some, yeah, with this sentence, the exclamation mark is not being used, whereas this is being used, used with certain emotions. Next are optative sentences. So what is an optative sentence? It indicates a wish, desire, or hope. And the verb used is always plural, irrespective of the subject. Most of the time, the verb that is being used in these sentences that is used as this could be with a plural subject, no matter what the subject is. Like Allah saved the world. So word save, as, as, as this verb could be used with the plural, only the kind of a verb is used with Allah. Optative sentences may end with full stop or with an exclamation mark. This depends upon the kind of a sentence and the kind of the emotion or feeling that is being used here. For example, long live Pakistan. May Allah help in this tragedy. And you may see that here the, that they end with a full stop and wish you a pleasant journey because I want to uh, show the force of uh, emotions over here. The, the kind of a wish that is being made, that's why I use exclamation mark. I wish I were a superman. So the kind of exclamation mark shows the kind of emotions of feeling associated with this wish. Here that's for you to test your skill. You need to identify the kinds of sentences that they are 
I'm sorry, I did not write uh, optative here. You have to find uh, whether these sentences are declarative, imperative, interrogative, exclamatory, or optative. And uh, that's all. That is the end of the lesson. Do its practice and you may ask me the queries on the given day. Thank you for today.